to Karen that things are changing at sea. Less fish to catch, more fishers, and even the weather is changing. Uh, McCoy goes on to say that uh, that's the, that is the reason he has started a seaweed farm. As he put it, fishermen have to learn how to move into other things. Can't only rely upon the sea. Now, Mr. Mr. Godfrey, share with us uh, how your cooperative get, got involved in seaweed farming. Um, seaweed farming, in my family, actually, we started harvesting from the wild mm -hmm. way about probably 30 years ago. But during the harvesting from the wild, we would break it up and scatter it on the ocean floor. And when we return, we conscious that the seaweed grows real rapidly. Okay. So we start to get in contact with a, a, um, a doctor from St. Lucia who had actually took seaweed from Belize and started a farm in St. Lucia. Okay. So he came back to Belize and started to introduce his system of growing seaweed on ropes mm -hmm. to us in Placencia. And that's okay. how we, as a, as a group in Placencia, fishermen, we start to get together and start to organize some okay. funding mm -hmm. to go and get this undergo. Nice. Wonderful. Now, in episode uh, nine as well, we hear, you hear Sir McCoy mentions he's trying to get other fishers involved in seaweed farming, but so far no one has taken up the offer. Now, Mr. Godfrey, was it difficult for your group of fishers to make the decision to get involved in seaweed farming and uh, be less involved in fishing? Was it a difficult thing to get folks together? Yes, um, yes, I know. We had um, people who got involved. I think some of them mainly just to to lend support to mm -hmm, us, mm -hmm. you know, and then you and then they they would go back to their to their general routine fishing. Okay. But then um, we have some fishermen that are really dedicated to the success of the project. Yeah. So uh, was it uh, what, what was the driving force behind this? Uh, why did you guys decide to, to get into seafood seaweed uh, farming? Um, our decision was actually based um, on two parts: mm -hmm. the economic situation yeah. and also the environmental situation. Okay. Because the seaweed was um, overfished or overharvested yeah. on the main barrier reef. Okay. You know, and the seaweed actually contribute a nursery setting for a whole wide variety of juvenile crustaceans and fish. Right. You know, so yeah. while we are actually making money from the seaweed farms, it's mm -hmm. actually creating an environment for juveniles. So what has that experience been like for you and the other guys? I would say educational, mm -hmm. entertaining, and fun. Wow. Now, uh, if you're if you're listening uh, right now across the country and you want to contribute, 203-2098, you could call us right now, 203-2098, 203-0528, and uh, tell us about Episode 9 and about uh, uh, seaweed farming, if you have a little experience as well. Now, for other fishers uh, out there interested in this type of in this type of work, Mr. Godfrey, uh, share with them some of the steps involved in starting a seaweed farm. How, how do you start this? Um, to start a seaweed farm, basically, you want to find an area that is free of um, hard corals, okay. like um, brain coral, elk horn, stag horn, mm -hmm. sea rod, sea fan, and those kind of coral life. You want basically either grass or um, mm -hmm. sand with a good current flow yeah. to start with. You need your anchors, your buoys, and your ropes, right. you know, and you stretch them out and make them. Well, we, we um, actually created um, 50 feet farms because the ropes are not dangling and yeah. you don't have break too much break off. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, but in terms of uh, the sale, how, how's the money factor getting, you sell the seaweed to, to where? Where, where? Um, We sell, we actually started out selling locally, right, in mm -hmm. Placencia, and then we go to um to the agricultural show, yeah. or, um, to the expo, and now we actually have um, foreign interests mm -hmm. in, in talking with us about supplying them and how much we could supply them for an international market. Okay, well, Mr. Godfrey, we have a call. Let's see. Punta Fuego, good evening. Hello? Yeah. Good evening. Yes, go ahead. It's a lyrical king, Brad Tops. Uh-huh, what, what, what's happening? I, I see Mr. Yeah. Godfrey is smile. So lyrical he... king, lyrical king, Brad Tops, Brad Tops. Okay. Stop. Where are you calling? Brad Tops, it's a lawyer. Where are you calling from? George Town. George GT. Yeah, GT. I want to talk to you. I'm talking to you. All right. The man, they say what up? All right. 
Let me talk, let me talk, friend. You enjoy, okay. you, you enjoy the episode? Yeah, man. What do you think? Yeah, man. But I want to say hello to Ross. Stop, stop, stop. Hello, give me a message. Make the man say give me a hi to the man. Yeah, yeah, the man. Don't say hello. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah. Let's make a call to big man. All right, buddy. Thanks for calling, man. Educational. Not this man. It's educational, man. All right. What do you think about seaweed seaweed farming? Yeah. Yeah, going back to my betting. Yeah, very good, very good move. All right. But I'm, I'm, I'm a farmer. I'm a little farmer too for the for, for little... Next to the of my wood, right? But okay. I don't really do sea farming, but that's my betting day, yeah. All right. Good. The good move. They do a good move there. All right, George Town. Thanks I for calling. I appreciate call. it. I really, I really want to support it and recommend it because... My brother for another matter is very innovative. Uh, uh, you know, right. We go a long way. All right, buddy. Thanks for calling. Yeah, you're welcome, man. man. I mean. All right. All right, Judge Dong. And, of course, he's supporting uh, the seaweed seaweed farming. Sounds good. And uh, seaweed is used for a lot, a lot of stuff, right? Yeah, seaweed. Uh, well, traditionally, in Belize, we are accustomed to seaweed just as a food drink. source. Uh -huh. A drink or uh -huh. put it in a soup or... Uh -huh. Or put in your gravy to make it a little bit thicker. Yeah. But it's also used now, like in um, cosmetics and soap. Okay. You know, we have people in in country that make soap for us from the seaweed. Nice. Uh, is this something that can be exported? Yes, it it can. We have uh, already um, exported. Okay. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm just intrigued by this whole seaweed thing, right? <laughs> yeah. So in episode nine, Karen mentions to Sir McCoy that she's working on a program called More Fish Equals More Money, which uh, looks at improving fishers' catch as well as identifying business opportunities so as to stabilize fishers' income. Now, Miss Julie, share with our listeners uh, what is the Fish for Life plan and how it was developed. So the Fish for Life plan is a program that was actually designed by fishers okay. for fishers um, in order to, to increase their standard of living um, and improve their economic standing. Okay. And it's done in two different ways. First of all, by providing opportunities um, for fishers and communities to explore ways of making a living outside of fishing. So if they wanted to, to stop fishing and going going into okay. new ventures, such as, like for example, mm -hmm. seaweed farming mm -hmm. um, or aquaponics, which is actually a combination of fish farming and hydroponics, which is organic farming okay. with using just water mm -hmm. or other things. So just moving totally away from fishing. Or the other way was actually to look at Ways of improving the the sustainability and the um, and improving the fishery sector in general. Yeah. So, for example, when we look at uh, traditionally, the cooperatives would sell whole um, lobster tails to the mm -hmm. U.S. market, mm -hmm. but there's opportunities to actually double the amount of um, double the profits by selling whole frozen lobster to the Asian market. Okay. So the whole idea behind the Fish for Life plan is to look at ways of improving the, the economic standing, mm -hmm. if whether, regardless of whether you remain in fishing or you want to get out of fishing. Um, and this was done through a series of Series of meetings and workshops where fishers themselves from the communities sat yeah. down and came up with the with the strategies themselves. And at the end of the day, you know, we're trying to find something that's really good for the economy, good for the people, yeah. and and good for the environment as well. Wonderful. Now, in terms of uh, how, how does a plan like 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 this benefit fishers and their family? Uh, it it actually benefits um, the communities, the entire communities, okay. in a number of ways. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, it it provides an additional source of income. Mm -hmm. um, it, it supplements their their traditional income yeah. for for the fishermen, but not just for fishers, but also for the entire community. So, for yeah. example, women can become involved in some of these activities, like yeah. for example, with the the seaweed farming. Mm -hmm. When it comes time for for processing and packaging, mm -hmm, women mm -hmm. can be involved in that. Yeah. So you're now providing jobs for women as well. Yeah. Um, you're also reducing the fishing pressure mm -hmm. on the um, on the wild capture fisheries yeah. because you're giving your you're providing alternatives. Or in the cases of where you're now going to target whole lobster instead of just getting the lobster tails, you you don't have to catch as much yeah. and you're make you're still making more money. Right. Um, it, it also, it strengthens the local economy, the mm -hmm. overall Belizean economy, especially for, for fishing communities. Um, when you look at communities up north, like for example, Sartineha, yeah. Kabarbank, Shanosh, yeah. these communities are heavily dependent on, on fishing. Mm -hmm. So if they find ways of 
you know, of, of finding alternatives and improving that their economic standing, it's it's improving the the community overall. Yeah. And finally, providing jobs, just more jobs for people, both young and old. I've spoken to a lot of the older fishermen who, you know, they've said, you know, it's left that for the young boy yeah. to go out there. They want a hard life out there. They want to move out to the sea and do something different. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, we have a call, Drew. Let's see. Uh, Punta Fuego, good evening. Yes, hello, good evening. Um, I'm listening to this show. Uh, it sounds very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for you to start this, if you're interested in starting this um, seaweed farming, um, mm-hmm. are they going to um, help you with finance or something like that to start off? I could, uh, is there uh, somebody wants to start a seaweed project? Is there? I have Miss Julie here, and she could answer that. Yes, actually, there is. Um, there's a lot of interest from a lot of individual fishermen and others who want to do seaweed farming. Um, what we're doing is we're encouraging people to become members of either a cooperative or association and do this in an organized manner yeah. rather than just have individual little farms. Because what we're talking about is trying to develop a product and market it at scale mm-hmm. um, and and to, to do this all through a uh, through an organized way. Mm-hmm. So it would have to be done through uh, through like fishing a, associations like or, 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 the, or the cooperative. Where are you coming from, Carla? Hopkins, Hopkins. Hopkins Village. All right. And uh, mm-hmm. is there somewhere that he could contact and get more details uh, on? Of course. Um, you could always contact me at the Nature Conservancy. Our telephone number is 822-0274. Um, 0274. 0274. Yeah. And um, there's also a fishing, there's a fishing association and there's members in Hopkins um, that that sit on the Belize Federation of Fishers and um, and several other fishing associations as well. So they're all involved in, in these programs yeah. or in trying to develop okay. these programs. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you for calling. There you have it, all the way from beautiful Hopkins Village. And like you mentioned, seaweed project already uh, down there in Hopkins, right? You, you well, the seaweed project started, it's it's in Placentia, Placentia but yeah. it's now expanded. Uh, now Which fishermen down, same in, area down, down in Punta Gorda have yeah. actually started. And in fact, um, Mr. Godfrey has been part of the team that's been providing a lot of the training okay. for fishermen from all over because there's a lot of interest in, in seaweed, huh? venturing into the seaweed farming. Now, Julie, there might be uh, listeners uh, thinking, hmm, that sounds like something I could invest in. Um, now... Why would you recommend investing in these projects that uh, you've mentioned? Why, why should folks uh, invest in them? Well, you know, Armin, we're living in times of uncertainty right now. Mm-hmm. Lots of changes. We hear it. We've heard it from the previous talk shows as yeah. well as in the in the, um, in the radio drama itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, you know, we have climate changes happening. The water is getting warmer. The We're getting more intense storms. Yeah. It's affecting our fisheries. It's affecting our reef. Um and we don't know what's going to happen in the future and how it's going to impact our traditional products. You know, we, yeah. we normally go for yeah. conch, lobster, yeah. but things things are changing. So mm-hmm. we need to be prepared for that. Um, we've, hear, we've heard it on every single show. Yeah. There's less fish out there. There's more fishermen out there. Mm-hmm. Um, fishers are going out. They're spending more time on the sea, going out further, bringing in smaller fish, yeah. less product. Yeah. Time's really, really hard. Um, and then the next thing to fisheries department right now, they're working really hard to try and manage the, the fishery industry so that it remains mm-hmm. sustainable. Mm-hmm. Now, several things will happen as a result of that. Yeah. It means you have more regulations. It means that, um, you know, perhaps you have, you, the, you have size limits being established. Yeah. You have quotas being set. Um, you have limited licenses being given out. Yeah. Expansion of replenishment zones. All of these things are being put in place mm-hmm. to try to maintain the fishery. So what's going to happen to the fisher? I mean, yeah. every single one of these things affect the fishers out there yeah. and the, the the entire fishing community. Mm-hmm. So it's, I think, time for us as a country yeah. to start to change the way that we think, change mm-hmm. the way that we behave, mm-hmm. start to think outside the box um, and become really, really proactive in diversing, diversifying our sources of income yeah. and finding out what other opportunities are out there in order to sustain our livelihoods. So I would actually like to take that question and throw it right back at you. Uh Why would you not invest in something like this? That's true. That's true. I I agree with all you're mentioning in terms of the alternative because uh, the fish stock itself, if we don't take care of it, it could run out. So so fishers need something else uh, 
uh, uh, to do. So um, uh, apart from seaweed, as well, what what else is is out there that they they could do? So a lot of fishermen right now um, are looking at doing tilapia farming. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's something that uh, the government has been very supportive of as well. Not to cut you off, but I saw a group uh, during the Ruta Maya, all right, a Taiwanese group or something like that. Because normally folks would say that the tilapia has this little taste, um, kind of. There's a difference in river fish and and from the ocean, right? But the way they farm it now, you know, it, it doesn't have this rocky, rocky taste. Have you, have you have seen you that? Have you tasted there? it? I tasted it, and it's good. Exactly. So have I. And yeah. I actually think it's a good fish. I mean, nothing can beat your your reef fish. Yeah. You, yeah. Nothing beats that. But yeah. it doesn't have the same taste like you get from the river when they farm it and they farm it properly. Right. Right. So that's an excellent alternative too, right? This yes, exactly. Different. And a lot of... Um, uh, several fishermen, there's a Sartaneja Tilapia Growers um, Association mm-hmm. up in Sartaneja. Mm-hmm. They have a fish pond and they're, they're starting, they've got 15 acres of land and they're looking at trying to develop that into, to increase their productivity. Yeah. The cooperatives are interested in purchasing the fish, okay. but the association can't produce enough as yet. Other groups, mm-hmm. other associations are interested in doing the same thing. Okay. So if we organize everybody, bring them together, they can actually meet the market demand. So, so Mr. Lowell, but uh, in terms of uh, those down in Placencia and the seaweed, it's only seaweed farming is the only alternative right now down, down that side? Yes, apparently so far, the only, but we are um, actually looking into some other type of farming also, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, like um, either yellowtail or yeah. sea cucumber, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah. because, because fishermen will always love to be in the ocean, mm-hmm. you know, so we want to keep them there, but still being productive. Right. You know, so yellowtail is something that you don't have to wait too long to make it to plate size. Yeah. You know. All right. And now, now, uh, Miss Julie, how can fishers learn more about Fish for Life, uh, plan for opportunities for additional income? How can they learn some more? Um, well, uh, the phone number again is 822-0274. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but it's really important, and I mentioned this earlier, that, that fishers get organized. Yeah. Um, it's it's very difficult to offer support to individual fishers wanting to, to do these projects. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they want to join up with, for example, you know, Mr. Godfriend of Placentia Cooperative and work with them on their project because they're, they're working on a much larger scale. Yeah. So, um, it's uh, there's a lot more certainty in what they're doing. Yeah. Or join up with any of the other associations or the cooperatives, and um, and you know we we will be supporting the projects through those organizations and associations. Wonderful. Uh, now this is Punta Fuego. Boy, uh, it's so interesting, and we're running out of time. Uh, two zero three twenty ninety eight two zero three zero five two eight. Reminding you that Punta Fuego repeats Sunday at one fifteen, and you could check out their Facebook page. It's that time for us to give away the big prize. Uh, but here's what we're going to do. Let, uh, you, ha- you brought some goodies with you, Miss Julie. The Nature Conservancy. She has a hat and a water bottle. And uh, give us a call and uh, tell us what you th- think about tonight's episode. And we'll give you a gift uh, from the Nature Conservancy. Let's see. We've got two calls already. Uh, all right. Uh, we lost those two calls. I think they won the big prize. Uh, but call us and tell us what you think about tonight's episode. Uh, episode 9 of Punta Fuego and you'll get the, or our discussion uh, tonight and you get a hat and a water bottle and I look good I want one myself so uh, 203-2098 203-0528 uh, Punta Fuego good evening alright we lost that call again I think my calls are dropping here uh, Punta Fuego good evening good evening yes uh, yes I'm, I'm really enjoying the show I I think it's very educational and I'm um, enjoying it and especially about the, the CV and the importance of the fisherman. Okay. Where are you calling from? Belize City. Belize City and your name? Derek Martinez. What Martinez? Derek. Derek Martinez. Derek, uh, we're going to give you a Nature Conservancy hat and water bottle, okay? All right, sir. Uh, you can stop on by tomorrow anytime uh, between uh, 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. and pick All it up. Right, Just bring an ID with you. All right, bye, bye. Thank you as well. Easy as that. that the, all right, let's get into the big prize before we give away another hat and water bottle. 
Now, this week's prize, a trip for two persons to Half Moon Key Natural Monument. And I must say, if you win already on Punta Fuego, give somebody else another a chance, all right? So if you've won, try to give somebody else a chance that, that haven't won as yet. A day trip for two persons to Half uh, Moon Key Natural Monument, home of the red-footed booby birds, and uh, Belize, uh, that's the Blue Hole Natural Monument, the world's largest blue hole in the ocean. Boy, I wish I could go. And this is courtesy of Belize Audubon Society. Belize Audubon Society co-manages seven of Belize's protected areas. We inspire people to live in harmony with and benefit from the environment through sustainable use. Become a member of Belize's leader in conservation today. Belize Audubon Society. Conserve, explore, enjoy. And this trip will go on July 18. Now, here we go with the question. How do plans which look at developing economic alternatives and expanding into other areas of fishing, such as the Fish for Life plan, benefit fishers? And we heard all about it tonight. Let me repeat the question again. How do plans which look at developing economic alternatives and expanding into other areas of fishing, such as the Fish for Life plan, benefit fishers? Let's see if we have a winner. Punta Fuego, good evening. Hello? Punta Fuego, hello? Tonight. Yes, you have an answer? Yes. All right, I have five uh, answers you could choose from, all right? Uh, give me about two. Um, yeah, you want to lower your, your radio for me a bit? Well, I guess. We're Think about a... economic um, outside of uh, fishing. Uh -huh. Miss Julie is here. She will tell you if you're correct. Yes, and also you can also have um, improve sustainability. That's correct? Yeah. All yeah. right. She says you're correct. What's your name? Andres Grajales. Andres? Grajales. Grajales. Um, uh, okay. Are you calling from? Belize City. Belize City. All right, uh, Mr. Grajales. You've just won your self a trip for two uh, by Belize Audubon Society. You haven't won before, right? No. Uh, no. Okay, then. Well, thanks for calling Punta Fuego. Okay, thank you. All right, we've got the one more gift to give away. You could call us, 203-2098, 203-0528. You get a hat and a water bottle courtesy the Nature Conservancy. All you got to do is to tell us what you thought about uh, episode nine. Punta Fuego, good evening. Lawyer, um, lawyer, radio, lawyer, radio for me. Sir. Yeah. Um, me is kind of from Key Cocker. Key Cocker. All right. Tell us, Key Cocker. Um, for eight years, yeah, yeah, fisherman. You got it. You got a lawyer, radio, Key Cocker. What's up, brother? Uh huh. Go ahead. Kind um, of from um, Key Cocker. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm a fisherman for you. You're fishing for eight years, okay. Boy, we lost him. We lost him. Uh, all right, we, we need one more caller, and uh, we're going to give away a hat and a water bottle. One more caller, 203-2098. Sorry, Kikako, we lost your call just a while ago. 203-2098, uh, Those are the numbers, and uh, as well, you could go on Facebook anytime and leave a comment on the radio drama we're about to close uh, i'm fast and wrong but i want to give away this thing but it's going to be here we could give it away you next could week give it away next week i could That's give it fine. away next week all right uh before we get final words uh, from our guest in studio um let me see if i could give it away tonight punta fuego hello hi hello yeah what you thought about uh, tonight's episode i thought i think that it was very um um like you teach people well how conservation about this country. Okay. That's it? Yeah. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Sun Hill Village. Sun Hill Village. And your name? My name is Karen Kane. Karen Kane. Mm -hmm. All right, Karen. You just won yourself a hat and as well a water bottle from the Nature Conservancy, all right? Mm -hmm. just, just Nature Conservancy. So, uh, yes, you, you, you come with your ID anytime uh, 8 to 5 p.m. during the week, Monday to Friday. Okay. Sure. All right. Thank you for calling. Yeah. All right. 
Um, uh, we always leave uh, with an inspirational message. But before I share the inspirational message, uh, final words uh, from you, Mr. Mr. Howell? Mr. Godfrey. Mr. Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> um, like um, a, lot of, a lot of the fishermen ask, uh, were asking about how they could do the farming, like inside the cooperative or their organization mm -hmm. or association. They could farm small groups and, and, and work their, their, their seaweed farm yeah. in a little small group inside the umbrella of their organization. Okay. All right. Then we want to thank you for stopping by. I learned a lot about seaweed farming. So I hope we could get you back at, at another time. Thank you, too. Miss Julie, final words. Um, well, first of all, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, really happy to be on the show. Mm -hmm. And um, it's an exciting time. It's a real exciting time to be able to to work and support these projects mm -hmm. and to work with the fishing communities to try and not just, you know, protect nature, but also preserve the life that, yeah. uh, if, you know, the, all our livelihoods. So yeah. thank you thank for stopping you. by as well. And uh, definitely hope folks would uh, get involved in this whole alternative uh, uh, method, right? Uh, so, uh, but before we leave, call for action or inspirational message. Don't cut corners to accomplish your, go your uh, goals in life. Don't be greedy. Work hard and diligently. And uh, over time, the success you build will uh, be sturdy and solid. That is why our inspirational message is a Creole proverb. One day, belly full, no fat, magadag. Fishers, call the Nature Conservancy. At 822-0274 to find out more about the Fish for Life plan. My name is Armin Aron and this has been episode 9 of Punta Fuego. Mm -hmm.